RWP is brought to you by Porch Beer Entertainment. We're back, man. We're we are back. Jeez. Jeez. Well, we didn't get uh, didn't get the softball win last night, did we? No, but we played the best game of softball I think this team has ever done. And then their I would entire have to lives. I'd have to agree. Accurate. There were plays made where that weren't by us. Yeah. Which is typically what happens. It's funny. Uh, Ricky at work said he listened to Rip Snorter, and we talked about softball, and he was following as we were describing our victory he was saying he be, he believed that what we were saying oh, that's um, amazing you know what that's called about the perfect Acting. game and stuff like yeah. that so i think we're probably some of the best actors in the world as you may hear later on in the episode we'll see yeah there may be a little surprise for you are there some oscar buzz i'm sure there is yeah. there is but you were on a trip and i was on a trip yes. so we had to skip a week uh, of show as we near the end of this season we only got one episode after this one remaining in the season um and then we'll do the best of so the point. the only highlight for my trip and it's not even a highlight it's more of a low light Ooh. um so it was like a farewell tour um we we negotiated we did we did a, we did a ton of stuff we had meetings and meetings like 10 hour meetings sure. 12 hour meetings Ugh. and on the very last day after the last like 12 hour um meeting um me and the two guys i was with is like we've done probably like four or five trips together now and like we were a power team but now both of them are getting promoted and i'm Ooh. taking my team lead spot so we're all basically getting promoted so the band's not getting back together no so we're dispersing and so we 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 went to a bunch of bars um, what city and if you can Fort you say Worth, yeah okay, okay yeah. got it so we we're in texas we went to a lot of bars yeah. cheap it's so cheap over it there is. it's it amazing is. did you drink some lone star oh yeah yeah, I had some Lone Star. Lone Star. I had uh, some Shiner Bach, yeah. which is a oh, it's great. Yeah. So we and we we had a we Ian had a, will like that as he listens to this episode. Oh yeah, dude, from where he lived in Texas. I love visiting Texas. Um, That's great. And so like we we got we got really drunk, and so yeah, we're too drunk. So yeah. we're calling it a night, right? I go back to the room, um, and I like look around, and I was like, mm, oh no, and I go to the toilet, oh, right? No, so I throw up. I instantly feel uh, a thousand times better. Half of it was like we we had stuffed ourselves full. Yeah, and then what kind, we what kind of food are we talking about here? Oh, Bar food? Dude. No, we're talking Heim barbecue. Ooh, baby! I ate one point. Oh yeah! I ate one uh, pound and a quarter of barbecue, oh. just straight. God, I've had, had some mac in a while. and cheese as a side. Oh, mac and cheese some is French a, fries, is always with a Parmesan side. and garlic on there. Oh man! Oh, it was amazing. So, but the 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 funny part is that I thought was funny, and that they were dying laughing in the morning um, when we all woke up super hungover and then went to more meetings um, before our flight out. Uh, I texted our group because um, we have group chat when we meet, and uh, sure. if we want to take sidebars during the meeting when we walk out and stuff. I typed, I just threw up so hard, JFK died. Wow. Out of left field. Never. I don't remember typing that. You're not a I, I literally, political humor guy. No. I, 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 th I threw up. I went to my phone. Yeah. And I, that's what you f came up with. That's what I came up with. Man. And then. Well, there was the infamous 9-11 joke you told on here that I had eliminated. Yes. Oh, yeah. yeah. I will never <laughs> allow that to be heard by human ears. <laughs> oh, um, no. Salty Dalton will occasionally bring the offenses. So I'm normally the offensive joke teller. And Salty Dalton is the offensive joke laugher. But Salty Dalton has, in his own right, a, an offensive mind that behind those frames that he's not wearing. He's not wearing his glasses right now. But, um... <laughs> So he has said some pretty messed up things. Yeah, it's kind of like a, you know, it's it's like a, I don't go out of my way to drink white wine, but I'll have a glass of white wine every yeah. once in a while. Every once in a while, you which know, I prefer almost, red almost makes normally. a greater impact because since that, you don't throw those out there and that And that's often, why I'm worried about it, right? Because it draws so hard more attention. that JFK died. Yeah. It's quite a line, especially that being it was where just, you that were. That was the only text. And then in the morning, they're like, man, how's JFK? And I'm like, what? And they're yeah. like, how's JFK? And I looked at the message and I was like, <gasps> yeah. <laughs> That's our tax dollars at work right there. Yeah. Well, I was off the clock. So. Yeah. No, I'm just kidding. I'm glad you're feeling better. I'm glad yeah. you made it back. So I, what about your travels here? So you went I, to the land of the sodas. I went to the land of the sodas, uh, Minnesota, uh, first time. And let me tell you a couple things. A couple, kind of, couple notes I took throughout the tour. One, I actually texted you one night about this in that. So I was sharing a room with my mother-in-law, my brother-in-law. And my wife, we all it was oh, the whole crew went. The okay. whole crew was in the same room. It was a hotel room, so not the father-in-law. 
he, he, he was he was hanging out with his dad, who's also in Minnesota. So okay. we met up with him later. But it was the four of us sharing. So we're talking mother in law, brother in law, me, my wife, what was the all in the same room. So Abby and I in one bed, the mom in the other bed, and then there was a couch situation, mm. which a pull out bed, I think. So, but all of us are in the same room. So we're all having to sleep uh, in the same room each night of the trip. It was about a four night trip, um, which is fine. It's whatever. It's economical. If you will, I didn't pay for the hotel, so I'm, I can't really complain. But the issue that arose was, and I texted you about this, is the problem was, you know, um, when it came to going to the bathroom, I couldn't, I did not want to go number two in, right. a, in a room where I'm sharing with multiple people. Well, they'll know. That yeah. Because they'll, 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 trust me, they'll know. <laughs> um, so I had to get very creative throughout the trip by using the hotel lobby bathroom at times. So what was your excuse going to the hotel lobby? One time I because said... Because like, at one time yeah. is like, okay, like, hey, I'm going to go down and check out the gym situation or like... Yeah, that's what see, I did. I'm going to see what the hours are for the pool even though you I didn't bring like, a bathing I pretended, suit. Yeah, I didn't bring a bathing suit and I pretended like I was going to go to the gym on the trip. That's There's no way it. I was going to go to the gym. But I, that's what I used. I said, I said, oh, let me go check out the hotel gym. Well, you'd gym. still come back sweaty, so that's fine. Exactly. Oh, yeah. And it was a onesie bathroom too. Um, so the cleaning lady at one point knocked on the door and I had to be like, Oh, I mean, somebody's in here, which we know I have trouble uh, with, uh, but there were other times throughout the trip where I'd have to use the bathroom in inopportune moments and I'd have to, uh, take it upon my, cause I, we also went to like her grandfather's house. I'm not going to take a dump in her grandfather's house because it's an old person home and the, all the windows are shut because that's what old people well, do. You don't, don't want to so kill him. The though. smell, yeah. the smell would be uh, unbelievable. Because like if you went and then he walks in, he smells that. What, exactly. what if that's the trigger? This is the first time I met her grandpa. Yeah. What if he just like kills over there? Uh, yeah. I, and then would be like, been... Oh great. Ben, Ben killed him. Yeah, Ben with his poop. Ben John John Winkley'd him or whatever it was John, the guy's name. What? Hinkley? What was the guy that killed JFK? John It's not John Wilkes Lee Booth. Harvey Oswald. Lee Harvey Oswald. Yeah, there was the other guy though. Hinkley was a guy. John that shot Wilkes somebody. Booth. Yeah, I know, but was, there was a, there was Who Hink is Hinkley? Hinkley's a man. He is a man <laughs> involved in some sort of shooting. I uh, guys, I'm Hinkley. Hink Hinkley no. Well, I killed someone too. Don't restart. Don't restart. If you restart, I swear to God, I will throw you out the window. <laughs> and now it's just giving me the spinning wheel. Hinkley Hinkley is shooter. Shoots Reagan. He shot Reagan. Yeah. See? Yeah, but Reagan lived. Yeah, okay. Well, he still got shot. Um, so I had <laughs> Pretty to, bad shot. So I had to me. plan. I had to strategize my poops. I had to strategize the poops. I had to go in certain bars, um, which is gross. And then I had to go in the hotel lobbies. I kept hanging out in the lobby. It was a very stressful experience. The other note that I had is, so in the Midwest, beer is basically water to them. They drink beer with every meal nonstop all day yeah which i was not really prepared for now i'm sure it's the same in other parts of the country as well texas the south things like that so literally for five straight days i was drinking beer now i did sample like six different minnesota yeah, yeah. beers now, did you like so them? i'm up on my minnesota um beers minnesota i, I, uh, I came up with a list of good beers i don't okay. know i'm not gonna read it right now you should, but you should give me that list because my um I will. team lead uh lived in minnesota for a little while oh, and okay. some of his favorite breweries are up there yeah so surly's is a good brewery mm -hmm. up there there's two classic old school uh there's uh grain belt and ham so those are two Green different belt is really good. old 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 school beers we went to boomtown brewery boom, which is a small boom brewery town. yeah uh, it was terrible. And then Here we went out. the boom. So we town. went to this one very old town uh, called Hibbing in Minnesota, where her grandfather Hibbing? lives. Hibbing. Hibbing, Minnesota. And it's a town of like 20,000 people. Not even. 15,000. 15,000 people. And we were on the main stretch. And we went into a, uh antique shop. And it was just this old man with wily eyebrows. That's how I can describe them. Is the hair is kind of going all over the place. They're wily eyebrows. And it was basically a room just filled with a bunch of stuff bunch of random crap and uh that was a wild experience just digging through some of his stuff the last thing i have is um is people in the midwest and you can ask your your, your friend about this is people in the midwest their big thing their big conversation piece is directions they will spend 15 minutes describing oh first you're going to go up the 95 then you're going to take go east on 64 it's like go they down, memorize it go down to 23 you're going to go to the second light then you're going to take a left there <laughs> um, then you're going to go up to 45 go east on 45 because west gets a little crowded then that you're going to go 15 minutes then you're going to go southwest about yeah 10 15 minutes or so and then you're going to take the north and literally every conversation with every member of her family my wife's family was that it was I think describing you just have to, like, where they're going stop asking where they're 
because the problem is you would go like, hey, um, where is yeah. the where is the local Seven uh, Eleven or whatever? Is I don't it, think they have Seven Elevens, but you go, where's the local Seven Eleven? Everybody, like, oh, first thing you're gonna do is turn on Maple, then you're gonna go north on Nine Fifty Five, then you're gonna go west on Six Twenty Five, then you're gonna do a U turn on you Four Fifty. Pretty good. Minnesota because I was with them for five days. <laughs> That's all I heard for five days was, "Oh, hey, then you're gonna go on the on the on the highway. Don't go on the highway. Go left." And oh, then, that don't bother me. And then no. they would have arguments because then one person would be like, "No, go east on 55," and the other person would be like, "No, go east on 55. Go north on 49." And then and like start yelling that would be the conversation. Yeah. And it was literally all weekend long. And I pointed out to Abby once that she noticed that like we were laughing about it the whole time because literally every conversation would be something to do with directions. But they're lovely people up there. I will say the Minnesotans. It's like a walking community in Map. Every West. time I leave this area and go somewhere else, I wish I wasn't in this area. Because I go somewhere else, I'm like, this place is wonderful. Everybody's so nice. They're drinking beer all the time. I love drinking beer. Yeah, here you walk outside, you get flipped off by here, like an here you walk outside, lady. And yeah, yeah, everyone goes, hey, go f*** yourself. Get back inside. <laughs> <Yeah>. um, <laughs> get back in the house. <laughs> yeah, literally, that's every... So uh, around this area, you drive... Uh, it takes two hours to get five miles in this area. They just shut down 66 the other day. They because just of shut a it giant, down. You see, because there's, there's a, a hole. giant hole there's in the ground. There's a hole in the ground. We have holes in the ground here in this area. It sucks. It's a terrible place to live. Don't ever live here. It's the worst place on the planet in Northern Virginia. <laughs> Northern Virginia and Washington, D.C. are the worst places on the planet. Everyone's angry. There's holes in the ground. Everyone's dude, telling you to go f*** yourself. Dude, 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 dude. Did I tell you about this? Um, I don't know if I did. Uh, so we, we, we got into an Uber. Um, this is like the first day we got there. Sure. Um, we, we Ubered to the food place because um, we're not like familiar with the area. We didn't want to yeah. find parking. Smart. So the Uber guy comes up. He picks us. He picks us up. Um, we we're just kind of making some small talk conversation with him. Yeah. And the guy's like, "So where are you guys from?" And we're like, "Ah, oh, yeah, outside of D.C." And he goes, "Ah, the old Chocolate City." Have oh, you ever yeah. heard that before? So I have. All of us looked at each other, and I immediately became yeah. uncomfortable because, and we're just yeah. like, we're like, we were like, well, no, Hershey, Pennsylvania, Hershey is in Pennsylvania. Yeah. Uh, maybe that's the chocolate city. He's like, no, DC, it's the chocolate I, city. And I was like, sir, uh, I cannot tell if you're legitimately being racist or if you just are like a, a hungry for trivia. Chocolate city. So I've I've heard that. You've just, actually heard that? I've heard it before, but yeah, it's not it's not a great It's not a good term. Why it's is not. DC known as Chocolate City City? Because DC was the first majority black city in America. Um so it was not necessarily a racist thing. Okay, first of all, first of all, first of all, first of all, <laughs> <laughs> you just read that sentence. It was a, it was the first majority black uh, city, and yeah. you said Chocolate City is not racist. Yeah, okay. yeah, because the it's not great. Well, Willy Wonka designed it, and everything is yeah, edible. You yeah. break off the bricks, the fat kids you eat keep it. falling yeah. in a pond. Yeah, um, the Augustus, Augustus Gloop. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, poor Augustus. Mother, Gloop. mother, I'm stuck. Yeah. I'm stuck in this. Willy Wonka just like he's gonna fucking die. I don't Dude, know what to tell you. Willy Wonka was probably one of the most savage human beings. Oh yeah, because literally, uh, this this girl ate this bubble yeah. gum, blew up to like eight times her size. There has to be health issues with that. I'm talking like her organs are failing. And every time it, their parents were like, we, "You need to save her. You need to save her." He'd just be like. You signed uh, the waiver. Yeah, he'd be like, you signed the waiver, and then he would be like, oh, I guess we'll have to, I mean. And he gets his slave uh, labor to go help out. Yeah, he's like, go ahead and bring her to the juicer. And the mom's like, what the hell is that? And then, like, when the Mike TV guy got shrunken, uh, uh, Willy Wonka was just like, well, I guess you just have a tiny boy now. And it was just like, he didn't care. He didn't care at all. He did not Because they signed the waiver. That's the thing. At all. He was like, you could die in this goddamn yeah. factory. And how many? I bet you. I bet you. He's seen so many deaths in that factory. Oh, 100 percent. He just yeah. stopped caring. Yeah, you, the Oompa Loompas are terrified because they've seen their brothers be slaughtered by the dozens. Well, in right. the in the new remake, right? They have Johnny Depp playing Ugh, Willy Wonka. Yeah. Didn't like it, Terrible. first of all. Um, but they actually like explained where the Oompa Loompas came from, and they're like a pygmy tribe in yeah. like f Brazil. Yeah. And he just was. He like went there. Was like work for me yeah. and just kind of made them work for him and he didn't tell them like what they were going to be doing you're going to come work in my chocolate factory but you know you're going to be my slave you can sing songs only yeah. when children die only only when um, they jump but uh but yeah it was a heck of a trip but i definitely uh you know i'm back but then i'm now very soon i'll be going on my actual vacation that was just for a wedding um we're gonna be going down to the old florida florida Flo and, and you're going on a trip too soon I right. am. I'm going to. Because you're going before October. me. Yeah, we're gonna go to to Jacksonville. Or after me. You're going after. Uh, right after. Yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. 
Go Man, to we, we gotta time this up better. Hang out with the number one rando, Mandy. Oh. If you're listening, yeah, we're gonna hang out with Mandy. She doesn't listen anymore. Nobody I got I got anymore. enrolled already into a cornhole tournament oh. with her husband. That's pretty impressive. Yeah, I was telling them that I was like 14 U champion for a little oh, while. So you national champion yeah, tournaments. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, that's all right. We'll 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 get into the. We're gonna have a lot of vacation talk because maybe I'll bring the recorder as well, and then you've got to record some stuff on the phone. Yeah. We'll figure it all out. But let's start the show. Well, um, here in a sec. First thing, I want to get yeah. to your your feeling. This this is really quick here. Sure, sure. So I several months ago yeah. was handed subway coupons. It was a buy one, get another, whatever you buy, free. Really? So, yeah, we so could, if, we're talking foot-long sub. You could have if two I went, feet of sub If for I went one. and bought a foot-long sub, I could yeah. double it for free. Wow. Um, but I don't see that as a gift. That is That's now... a lot of food. It, no, it's a burden on me. Yeah. One, because Subway... It's, it it's it's where you end up when it you sucks. can't decide yeah. what to eat. Yeah. It's that place it's that you just show up at and you're like, well, this'll do. Yeah, you go and sub so, to Subway. I didn't feel like McDonald's. Exactly. And so I basically now have two coupons that requires me to buy a foot long first. Yeah, and which then you be, don't even want to do. And then be burdened with a second, a second sandwich. Long, which like then has to sit in your fridge and you and you can't just not eat it because it was free. Exactly. And if I waste, the, yeah. if I if I let the coupons expire, yeah, you that's can't a do waste that. of like $30 because it's like that. $15 for a sandwich. So I, it's a it's a burden. It's, it's just Subway like... Subway coupons aren't helpful. They hurt you. It's just like that Domino's commercial. Have you seen that where they're like... Uh, if your pizza got messed up during delivery, we're going to like just call us and we're going to give you a free pizza. And then the, in the commercial, the guy shows up like the next day and he's like, so we heard about your pizza having issues. Here's a brand new pizza for you. I don't. What if I didn't want that exactly. pizza? What, what if, if I'm in the middle of dinner and like I walk up to the door and then my <laughs> wife's like, oh, so you order pizza behind my back? I'd be like, well... Me. What if the person didn't know like what the issue was the first time around, like the, the Domino's employee that's delivering it, so he doesn't know the full backstory, but the backstory, like the guy shows up to the door, and he's got like two black eyes, and it was because the old Domino's guy punched him in the face. Yeah, and, and like, threw the pizza on the ground. Threw the pizza at him. They're like, that's why they're delivering the but second like, pizza free. Why are you delivering it a day later? I don't need, and I don't I'd need rather, extra food. That's just it. Like, they have that pizza insurance, the $5 yeah. insurance. If you, if you, tr if you f***ing trip on your face walking out the door, they'll replace it. If I'm paying for Domino's pizza and something wrong happens. I brought that on myself because I bought Domino's pizza for like ten dollars. Yeah, I, I mean I'm not gonna buy pizza insurance. But like, I don't, barely have my own insurance. I'd rather you replace it same day delivery. Yeah, is that too much to ask? Just like, bring another pizza. Hey, guess what? The pizza arrived. It was upside down for some reason. Yeah. Like, oh God. And then they're gonna be like, all right, we'll get a new one out to you. I'd rather wait thirty minutes than be burdened with a pizza twelve hours later. Yeah. In the middle of something. I once put the wrong phone number in. And it was at Mason, and it was over winter break when I was going to do a broadcast. So I got into the dorm, and I had a couple hours to kill, and I was like, I'm going to order a Domino's pizza. It's going to be great. Were you I, watching I, the window like a hot? I waited for an hour and a half. I had no pizza arrived. And I was like, what the hell's going on? So I called the Domino's, and I'm like, hey, where's my pizza? And they're like, oh, uh, yeah. They find the order, and they say, um, they, they uh, read out my phone number, and there was it was one digit off. And I was like, oh, f And they're like, well... We can, I guess, still try to deliver it again. And I was like, well, now I don't have any time. I got to go. So I two hours ago, went, and then I had to go. And I was so upset. You know, how that ruined my, the rest of my day. <laughs> ruined my month. Ruined my month. Um, let's, well, we got to get into yeah, the show here. So what's, the, uh, what's the, uh, the, the Roku or the Haiku, whatever it's called? Oh, God. Flip Dude, on the Roku. I always forget about this. I mean, we, we do take like every other week off now. <laughs> I know, We're right? the laziest <laughs> podcasters that exist. This season has taken two years to complete. <laughs> Well, if you think about it, I mean, it, weekly is pretty ambitious. I mean, it is. It is. Especially two busy gentlemen like us. All right. I'm just trying to hit, the fill the form with random ideas. Oh, yeah, yeah. Write me a All poem. Random. Give us the monkey, the monkey haiku. Oh, wow. Turtle. Oh. A haiku. Okay. Loving summertime. A loggerhead. Turtle stings. Whilst watching the salt. Beautiful. Beautiful. Beautiful <laughs> Poetic, Roku almost, there. Yeah. All right. Let's start it. <laughs> I'm just going to keep saying the name. It's the Random Word Podcast. you got to understand what that means, right? Yeah. Everything that they do is based on Spy Kids. I came up with this dick monster. By the way, look at that bird. 
That could be on the random bird. Letting the sweet release of death embrace me. Grab the dustpan! Dog justice. Dog, Dog justice, justice too. <laughs> Feel oh, the lure. Yeah. Tim's dad has been thrown out of five Little League games so far <laughs> by the local umpire crew here, but... I just can't quit you, dear. I just can't, <laughs> just can't shoot you. can't quit you. <laughs> Good morning. Plus every... <laughs> Good morning. Hey, buddy. Wake up. It's time to go. <laughs> I ordered Correct. these from the baby cat. Dictionary? And she kept saying the word heavy. Hunter, I barely know her. <laughs> Your Tamagotchi has AIDS. It's like, how does it have AIDS? Like, so many baby heads could fit in there. I don't think you can bite my neck like a f***ing vampire. Oh, ridiculous. It's ridiculous. It's time to waste your time. It's the Random Word Podcast with your hosts, Ben and Salty Doll. Welcome into the Rando Nation. I don't know where that went. Welcome into the Random Word Podcast. Welcome to the Rando Nation. Nation. Nationwide is on, on your, your side. side. <laughs> anyway, welcome into episode 49. You heard it. One away from 50 here on this beautiful Thursday evening in front of our live studio audience. Terrence has gone to the hospital. They Terrence, they are. Terrence, you look good. Terrence. Yeah. You, buddy. How's Chocolate awesome. City treating you? Yeah. Oh. Hey, oh. <laughs> Whoa. Uh, canceled. Canceled. Can- canceled. They're going to take us canceled. off the air. We're too wild. <laughs> uh, with your hosts, Ben and Salty Dalton, you're this truly 49. The microphone. This is 49. One away from 50. Oof. One away from 50, and then after 50 will be the best of. And uh, we're almost there. We're almost we there almost through 50 there, episodes. Yeah. Man, it's taken a long time, but we're almost there. Uh, again, Instagram at the random word podcast. Email the random word blog at gmail.com. We do have some emails actually on top of the emails that are on the on the list. But Came we'll, in late. We'll, yeah. We'll figure, yeah, some late to the game folks. Even some good, some one person with some positive feedback about the best or the, uh, what was it? The one year anniversary show. We the got quiz. some feedback on that. No, no. Oh, the, oh, the one year. Yeah. Oh, that was yeah, great. We got some feedback on that. But first we got to get to, we, we do have some segments here again. And again, for those who didn't tune in last week, we are trying to shorten the show. We'll see what, if that happens with this this episode but we are cutting some segments here and there um trying to th- make this a little more listenable for those on the, who have like only looking like an at hour you commute nick and stuff like that nick is will never listen past this point so it doesn't matter but let's get to the word your word is your word is your word is cat's paw Cat's paw, not chutzpah. Cat, not, not chutzpah. Like a cat's paw, like a cat's oh. actual paw. Is That's the word. Uh, let me. Can I guess the spelling? It's got to be something weird, right? It can't just literally be C A T. Give it. Give it a try. Give it a try. It's n- is it C A T S P A W? <laughs> Correct. Is there an apostrophe? Yeah. C A T. How is that a word? Yes. It's a, it's a noun, and it means. Uh, so there's two meanings of it. A light air that ruffles the surface of the water in irregular what patches the during a. F- like when it's windy and you see like a ripple. Oh, you see the cat's paw there, yeah. dude. That that's probably exactly how they used it. Yeah, I was transported just now to the yeah. origin of that word. Yeah, because I was I an think, old fisherman. Because I think uh, so. What happens is when a cat is like you've seen it. If you fill up, so when we were younger, we used to fill up the sink. Yeah. Um. It, actually, this is kind of weird. No, this is kind of well. Uh, yeah, I up? mean, looking at it now, like a little f-ed up for the fish. So oh, no. we would like to like, cause our cats would always like the, some of them were outdoor cats. They yeah. hunted a lot. Um, sure. If like we wanted to kind of reward them, <laughs> this is the, actually this is bizarre. Okay. So we, we put our cat in the bathroom, right? Yeah. We fill up the bathroom sink. We drop a goldfish in there. Oh my God. And then we close the bathroom door and then whatever happens, happens. And well, we, I mean, there's only one animal that's going to win that. <laughs> and it's not so like the goldfish is going to come out and we, suck the cat We in the come face. in, there's water everywhere. Yeah, of course. Then there's, there's some scales. Frenzy. There's some scales, a little bit of blood. Little, and, only a little bit because they're fish. And a little bit of blood. And then, like, the fish is gone. We might see a tail somewhere. But, like, that was, like, a weird way of, like, being like, here you go, cat. Have you a were, good like, time. like, running your own Hunger Games. And so there. what it would do is it'd sit there and it would... Pot the water yeah, and paw. make little tiny patches of ripples. So uh, maybe that's where it came from. Cat's but paw. The secondary meaning of this is um, one used by another as a tool. So Ben, I know when when you were in high school and especially when you were in college, you would use your brother 
oh. as a cat's paw. Like, where are you going with this? To get out of social engagements. Oh, yeah. Oh, because yeah. one time, we literally were about to roll to your... Uh, well, we're doing something where we're just like... All right, Ben, are you in? It was like same day plan. You need yeah. you need time to process this. Same this day before plan. you knew about the process, the, like the, 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 uh, the protocol. And um, you were like, "Sorry, guys, I got to babysit my brother." Yeah, and we're like, "Isn't isn't he sixteen oh, or yeah. seventeen? And you were like, old. "Yeah, but I got to babysit him." You understand? And we're like, "We don't, but okay." Yeah, I had a babysitting gig. Right he there, was your cat's paw. You used him as a tool. I used him. I used every member of my family's birthdays. Yes, um, your uncle had a couple birthdays. I made up many a wedding. Um, I've only really been to like one wedding in my life, but I made up my own. Um, uh, made up plenty of those. Um, I've, I'm very... Now, I'm not as much as I used to be because now like we've gotten to the age where nobody even wants to hang out with each other. Yeah, it's great. So, so like... But back then, back when we were like early 20s, everybody like, oh, every weekend, it's like, oh, let's go hang out with so-and-so or do this and do that. Um, and I didn't want to do any of that. So now it's, it takes it's great. Me, I like view myself as having like a social points budget yeah and i have to save and i have to save and i have to save and then if i go out and i rage or we go like to a party or bar hop or do something strenuous go outside it's just like it those i'm spending these points left and right but you're right it, it's hanging out with people now oh yeah social points yeah i look at my bank yeah. statement and it's like oh yeah. you've overdrafted here's a fee yeah. and here's another fee yeah, you can't overdraft with friendships it's it will it will blow it, it will yeah. be terrible that's terrible you. yeah it's like uh you get a social hangover the next day where i'm like don't even look in my eyes yeah like you and i spent a whole weekend together basically a couple weeks back oh yeah that was my max social points i have yeah because we also do a podcast together yeah <laughs> so you have a little leeway on my social points because we have a commitment to the rando nation every yeah, week that's true nation like even if we side. start hating each other we still have to come in the studio and do our uh, our job that's what we're getting paid well, to do. We're, we're consummate is it constant consummate, consummate professionals we're consummate gonna consummate this marriage that's what it is <laughs> let's right? consummate it right now i'll push his laptop off the table you know they real quick um not that this is Are really you talking a, about conjugal visits no, no, oh, okay. but that's a great topic as well. But <laughs> no, you know, back in the day, like they would use literally like the whole consummating marriage, like couples would have to have sex in front of the wedding party. Like everybody, no. everybody, there's no way. Yes. There Are was you like, serious? A, there was a special little like altar and the couple would have sex. This is like way long time ago, but, um, they would have sex on, we're talking like, like the wedding altar, like full, if we had to label it like soft core hardcore I, mean, I wasn't there this is a long time ago okay i haven't seen video that seems extreme because like if it was one thing like if it's like behind a curtain yeah. or something like that but uh, even if the priest had to watch you that's just it's yeah. so weird yeah they had to do that back then that's i don't i don't know if they I had to but they did so i don't know enough <laughs> to tell you you're wrong i'm just telling you it I just mean, that's so bizarre maybe it could be a, a what would you have done if like you may now kiss the bride and then the priest is like all right i mean take off them britches um <laughs> No, what? I uh, I don't know, man. I can't I can't tell you what I would have done because I, <laughs> I I don't know. I know I probably would have never been married, or I would have uh, you know gone somewhere else. I don't know. I would have sprinted out of there. It would have because uh, I don't even like taking my shirt off in front of people. So well, it, I mean, yeah. it would get to the point. I think if that was still a thing mm -hmm. that much like major league, base I'd be wearing like a swim shirt. <laughs> <laughs> the striped one, yeah, the striped swim shirt, like while that's from the nineteen twenties. What I'm yeah. saying is, like, I think it would get to the point where much like uh, Your major entire house is beeping. I know, like major league baseball <laughs> scouts, right? Yeah, yeah. But yeah, you'd yeah. have those at weddings for porn industry. Oh, so this was well before then, but yeah. So well, if right, it's if now, it was still today, right? Sure, that's what sure. it would devolve into. It's like major league scouts. It's like the same thing, <laughs> <laughs> like the same profession. Um, so the word cat's paw. Cat's paw. Cat's paw is the word Cat's paw. on this show. Now, you have a brand new segment here. I do. So, um, oh, first of all, how about we tell them who this segment is sponsored oh, by? Oh, right, 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 right. Yes, we do have to get into. So we've got some some new sponsors on the show. Not your traditional um, ones, actually. We, uh, yeah. we we did a partnership with a local um, like Cinemax theater um, yeah. down the way, right off of right off 50. Yeah. Not that kind of theater, you perverts. <laughs> um it was, uh, yeah, great, great it's partnership 50, there. Take 45 west. Oh, yeah, you're going to go down minutes. Road 50. You're going to go east on 95, and then you're going to go west. Um, so they actually brought us in to see two brand new movies that are coming out Advanced this fall. Advanced screenings? And yeah, we dude, had our own were, private screenings. They were f incredible. They were. They were... Uh, 
They are two fantastic films. We the Oscar buzz is real with these two films. I've been reading oh, yeah. about it. I, I mean, I was just we the just the the research we did that they, they've yeah. won a lot of film festival awards. Yeah. Like just just by the initial submission, blew the competition out like, of the water. They make that new Joker movie look like My Little Pony. Oh, dude, that's such a good comparison. I mean, that's really what it what it looks like. So we'll uh, we'll let you. We're gonna play a couple of these trailers. We're gonna let you listen to one now and one later. Um, because these are, again, these are movies that you're going to want to go to your local, uh, blockbuster and check out, um, or go to Redbox, um, or the other one, Hollywood video. Um, you want to check Hollywood that out. Video. Hollywood video. Good pull. Yeah, How over about there in North Point that? Village Center. Yeah. 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 Um, so here we go. Uh, we'll, we'll go ahead and play this. Uh, yeah, let's roll the tape. Roll it. Coming to theaters this fall, a blockbuster exclusive straight to DVD release and VHS and VHS a tale of sorrow on the open seas a tale of survival of loss and of sacrifice raise the raft raise the raft captain captain do you see that you see that island maybe we should we should probably go check it out yeah let's let's take a look set south by southwest Let's head towards that island, gentlemen. <laughs> the music we're gonna, festival? <laughs> we're gonna be rich. This is exactly where the map leads. I don't trust maps. I trust only one thing in this world. It's this bowl right here. Take a look, son. You see this? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. There are... You see those drawings carved into that wall? What is that supposed to mean? Here, quick, quick. Come analyze this. I haven't seen this for years. I, they said these markings disappeared a long time ago. Where did they come from? Captain? Captain, something's wrong with John. John? He's, he's being taken over by something. We gotta get back to the ship. <laughs> One captain has to risk it all, even if it means losing his closest friends. I don't want to do it. You've got to do it. Just... Please, sir, pull the trigger. I don't want to die like one of them. I don't want to do it! It's... Sir, please. Crunchitize me, Captain. The sound effect. I'll put it in there. Okay. I think that's good. Well, oh. Coming to... Coming to theaters. Yeah. November 2019. Captain Crunch. Open waters. NC-17. <laughs> oh, man. What a film. Did you hear that? Wait, it, was, it, wasn't, it wasn't a comedy. Oh, Did I know. Did you take that one as a comedy? Wait, that wasn't? I thought it was nominated for Best Comedy. Well... Maybe it was. It was best comedy slash children's film. Yeah, that's probably what it was. That's yeah. animated right. feature. Right. Um, it was an animated feature film. Yeah, that's gonna um, be a good one. Captain Crunch, Open Waters. Open uh, Waters. Definitely check that out. Uh, when Tread you can. lightly. Tread lightly. I mean, hope you hope you enjoyed that. That's gonna be a great film. And uh, bring a life vest because the tears will be a flowing in that movie. Yeah, and 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 oh, the cat's paw will go right across the lake of tears there. <laughs> um, so uh, yeah, anyway, I can't so stop doing it. So welcome to this new segment. Um, yeah, we're what's getting it closer to the holidays, and due to our erratic schedule, that sometimes we just don't record. Sure. I figured let's get some of the Christmas buzz out <laughs> okay. of the way early in September. Got in it. September, Christmas is coming in September. Okay. Um, so this is a uh, one-time segment that I've developed. Um, it's called Hallmark Movie or Christmas Song. Got it. Now, um, since. The 1960s and mm -hmm. 70s, there have been hundreds, if not thousands, thousands. of Christmas songs released, um, hundreds every year by different artists. Um, and then Hallmark has actually released over 175 movies 
since uh, I don't even know, maybe like 2000. My mom's a big fan of the Hallmark movies. I used to work at a Hallmark. Yeah, we would play these movies. Yeah, it's uh, terrible it's, movies. You know what? I, they're making so much money off of this because it's a simple like yeah. uh, it's a simple equation: boy meets girl, yeah. uh, mis miscommunication, mis yeah. misconnections. They get together, something breaks them apart. They realize it was somebody else, and they get back together again. That's how, and then, and it, that's and then it's every Christmas. movie, and then it's Christmas, which is great. So. Um, I decided to pull a giant list. I only took a portion of both uh, every Christmas song ever okay. and every Hallmark Christmas movie <laughs> That's ever quite made. Quite a lot of work. And um, I have a list of about like maybe twenty five for you here, and um, it's a little quiz. I'm going to read you the title, and okay. you're going to tell me if it is a movie or a song. <sighs> That's going to be very tough. I feel. And like. I can tell you the year the song came out and the year the movie came out. Okay. Um, Okay. All right. Let's 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 start with a couple. Let's let's hit me. All right. Two thousand and eleven. Okay. Jingle all the way. Okay. That's that's a movie. It is a movie. Yeah. Okay. So is it just a Hallmark movie it's versus a, just, a song? This okay. is specifically because I thought Hall- Jingle All the Way was also the Arnold Schwarzenegger. It is movie. also the Arnold Schwarzenegger. Okay. But guess what? Hallmark came out with a movie. Got it. Own. Got it. Creative. Um, <laughs> someone is missing at Christmas. Oh, that's got to be a movie. That's a song. What? Two thousand five. Um, Someone is missing at Christmas. Angels Among Us. That's got to be a movie. That's a song. What the f***? Um, Silent Night. Okay. <laughs> I mean, I know Silent Night's a song. There's some freebies in here. So I'm going to go song. That's a movie. Okay. 2010. <laughs> what the f***? Oh, wait. Uh, oh, yeah. In 2002. Sorry. Oh, yeah. Like, it makes a difference. Um, November Christmas. November Christmas. All right. Here we go. We're going to start <laughs> clean slate. Clean slate. November Christmas sounds like a great tale about the time that um, this family had to do Christmas in November because they were all dying mm-hmm. in December. Um, so it was a movie for sure. It was a movie. 2010. Yeah. Okay. Um, all my love for Christmas. All my love for Christmas. That's a oh my love 1998. For Christmas. Oh my song for sure. It is a song. Yeah. You have three right, three wrong. A dog named Christmas. A dog named Christmas. Great tale of a Jewish family that hated their dog, so they named him Christmas and killed him. It was a movie. It was a movie in 2009. Hallmark came out with a dog named Christmas. Yep. Great name. Yeah, I can only guess what that movie could have been. Um, The Christmas Secret. Ooh, that sounds... A little spicy. It is. Sounds Maybe a little, like a little song about affairs. I don't know. You said song. Ooh. So is the song. That's a movie. Well, why did what you throw me? You... 2014, The it's, Christmas Secret. It's collusion. Where they find out Santa was dead the whole time. Yeah, you said it was a movie. Oh, yeah, yeah. Christmas Secret. Christmas Secret. It doesn't exist. Um, The most wonderful time of the year. Okay. That's a song that's a movie 2008 hallmark came out with the most wonderful time of the year you've got to be thinking a lot of these do share similar <sighs> song titles right so is there a lawsuit there maybe yeah, they're the same thing what they're about, the same name uh, elf's lament elf's lament so <laughs> you've you've thrown some movies in a row so in theory this should be a song but that is a very fucking stupid name for a song but also for a movie, because this is like the elf that regretted getting involved. It's Elf's Lament. Yeah, that's all elf, it says. In the elf world. He's like, God, I, I, I could have been somebody, but I got... In the elf world, was it the mafiosos? Yeah. It's like, you come to me <laughs> on the day of the Christmas <laughs> Eve. You come to me on the day of Christmas, and you didn't make a present, you stupid elf. On the day of my daughter's wedding, and also on Christmas <laughs> Eve. You ask me this favor. Christmas Eve. Elf's Lament. Uh, um... I, I think you're trying to trick me here. I'm going song. It is a song. Yes. You are correct. 2004. Um, Christmas Getaway. Ooh. It's a it's a steamy tale of two people that um, from two different worlds that you know just wanted to uh, get away for Christmas time, and they wrote this song called Christmas Getaway. It's a song. It is a movie. 2017. <laughs> uh, Christmas Cookies. Christmas Cookies. Yes. If that's a movie. I'll die. <laughs> it's a movie. It is a song. Oh. Two thousand and one. What is what, is, what kind of name for a song is that? Christmas cookies. Dude, you're on a hot streak though. Um, actually, no, you're not. I keep no, giving check marks. Hold on. I keep getting everything wrong. Oh, thanks for the check marks. 
Okay. Christmas cookies? That's not a name for a song. I know. You're, you're at about an even split right now. Even Stevens. Um, Santa's going to come in a pickup truck. Ooh. That's... I don't <laughs> what know. kind of f***ing... <laughs> I don't know why anybody would name that movie. It's a song. It's a song. 2000. Yes, well played. It's got to be. <laughs> Santa's going to come in yeah. a pickup truck. Yeah. Double meaning there. Um, journey back to Christmas. Journey through time. Um, Journey Back to Christmas. Got to be an epic movie there. I'm going to movie. 2016. It is a movie. Yeah, that sounds awesome. The Nine Lives of Christmas. Uh, so it's a cat? Is that? Because cats have nine lives. Um, so it's a movie about a cat. I would assume it's about a cat, but you never know. Um, the, a Christmas Visitor. A Christmas Visitor. That sounds epic as well. It's like a... You know, that, that, that brother that you forgot you had shows up on Christmas, and uh, it, it's but but then you wrote a song about it. It's a song. It's a movie. <sighs> 2006. You did well with your pattern, patterns here. Um, a gr- Wait, no, this says, oh, Grandpa for Christmas. Grandpa. I'd like a, I'd like a Grandpa for Christmas. <laughs> well, that's impossible, because <laughs> he's been dead for 15 years, um, but I wrote this song about you. I just want a Grandpa for it's Christmas. It's a movie. Uh, 2007. Um, Christmas card. A song. It is a movie. 2006. How, okay, you keep tricking me because you've done like six movies in a row. Oh, here you go. Operation Christmas. Oh, it's a song. Yeah. Operation Christmas. We're going to kill movie. Osama. Uh, it's a movie. Yeah. Okay. 2016. All right. All right here we go. All right. You got four left here. You're, sure. You're on a rough streak. You got three in a row and then okay. four wrong. Right, I'm going to take this seriously. All right. Snowflakes of Love. That's a song. That is a movie. <sighs> No, wait. No, you're right. It's a yeah, song. Yeah, 2001. How about I, that? I wrote it. Uh, on the 12th day of Christmas. <sighs> on the 12th <laughs> day of Christmas, which is also a song. But for this purpose, I think it's a stupid Hallmark movie. It is a 2015 TV movie. There we go. Here we go, man. Uh, the Christmas <sighs> Ornament. The Christmas Ornament. There's been some pretty dumb names. The Christmas Cookie. The Christmas uh, Ornament. That's a song. That is a TV movie, 2013. And the last one here. I did pretty bad. Ghost of My Christmas Past. Ooh. Pretty dark meaning That's a there. terrible name for a movie, so I think it's a song. Wow, that is a song. Yeah. I think that's the perfect name for a Hallmark movie. Yeah, I think it's too lengthy. It's too lengthy. Okay, so uh, that was Hallmark movie. How much did I get right? Or Christmas song. You got one, two, three, four... Five, six, seven, and eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Dang, we should have played the this or that theme song for you that. You got thirteen right. We should have played this for it. Yeah. For the intro. I wasn't ready. We should have. So I got thirteen right. You got thirteen wrong, and you've got... Oh, thirteen wrong. Okay. And you got, uh, tw- what did you say, twelve right? Oh, so very close. You're, oh, wow. you're about you're that's about fifty bad. fifty. That's about like what I'm at uh, when but I bet. But that just goes to show you that um, honestly, if if I had heard this, I would have no idea. Yeah. And also, there were Christmas songs that I've never heard of never in my entire of. life. No, no. I, I I think I hear the same five every year. The same, Jingle Bells. Yeah. Uh, Mariah Carey. Yeah. All I want for Christmas. And then the really creepy one where like I saw mommy cheating on daddy. Oh. By kissing Santa Claus. <laughs> Um, which it's and just awkward for everybody. they went to the everybody. casting couch. And yeah, it just, and then, uh, yeah, some naughty. Some na- Were you naughty or nice? That's the question. Um, let's transition to a little bit of knowledge. You know, you, you've given me a tough test, but now it's time for a little information. And you know what that means, people. That means it is time for Salty Dawn's Incredible Brain Explosion Full Body Learning Experience brought to you by Kellogg's Frosted Flakes. Hey, kids. Nice to see you. How are you doing, Terrence? Hi. Get away from me. Sorry, Terrence. What are you doing here? That's not more Christopher Walken. Sorry, Terrence. I'm just a clown trying to make it in this world. That's pretty good. (laughs) Pretty good. <laughs> Pretty good Christopher Walken clown Thanks. impression there. <laughs> it's a little, it's a little, it's a twist on the original take of of know, Christopher Walken. Dubs, Remember yeah. when you called him Christopher Walkins? Christopher on this podcast? Walkins. You're like, there's only one. Yeah, that was great. Unless that was, that was he back was when we were cloned. Funny. Yeah, that was yeah. back when we were funny. Yeah. Imagine that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> okay, so welcome to Salty Dalton's Incredible Brain Explosion Full Body Learning Experience, sponsored yep. by Captain Crunch Open yes. Waters. 
coming this fall True. to a theater near you. Yep. And we got um, another movie trailer to play later on. We do. Um, so uh, this one's pretty short and sweet. Um, okay. I'm going to tell you about the Order of the Pug. Order of the Pug. Order of the Pug. Speaking of dogs, Tilly has made a guest appearance. Right on cue. How are you doing, Tilly, today? Tilly knew uh Tilly knew today here. could be a show. Tilly today. Honestly, Welcome if you just put a Tilly camera today. like what we have on Tilly for and like live streamed it for like two hours a day, people I, would watch. It would probably get weirdly popular. It would have more views than we've had downloads. For sure. Well what we you do is you remember that big craze with the Twitch where um f- like forty thousand people were all playing Pokemon at the same time, so you could yeah. all control it. And they finally beat the game. Yeah. Um, if you did Tilly in whatever direction she went, uh-huh. was like a movement on the pad and see how far she gets in the video game. That would be pretty fun. Um, anyway, so Order of the Pug. Um, so this was a paramasonic society founded by Roman Catholics. Okay. Um, it was believed to have been founded in 1740 by Clemens August of Bavaria. All right. um, and what was interesting about this one in particular is it actually allowed women to become members. This was in 1740 when women didn't exist in men's eyes. <laughs> Not uh, at all. They couldn't see them. They just couldn't see them. Um, so th- any woman could become a member as yeah. long as they were Catholic. So there was just one criteria. Sure. Like, hey, you sure. Catholic? Sure am. Welcome to Order of the Pug. Which, you know, to be fair, you could just say it. 100%. Who's, how are they going to check? No idea. I mean, you don't have they, like a maybe tattoo. They, maybe they have like a, one of the bullpen phones, but it goes to God. Yeah. And he's like, hey, uh, how's uh, how's Jim over here? Yeah. How's number 45? Is he a Catholic? And then they'll be like, yeah, Le- yeah, he's good. Put the, put lefty, the lefty or righty? Yeah. yeah. Oh, God, southpaw. Um, so the pug was chosen as their their symbol. They had pugs back then. I, I guess. Yeah, actually they did because, um, well, this isn't a fair, because it's Disney. Uh, Pocahontas. Okay, Remember the yeah. little I, pug? No, no, no. It's out of, no. We're not using that as that historical was like in, reference. That was in Jamestown, which was, when did... Yeah, but that was a movie. Yeah, but... The movie wasn't a live film in Jamestown, though. But they had pug... That's the weird thing about some of these dogs is like, do they really have... Do they have like a poodles walking around the colonies? I, I, I don't know. I, I need feel to like, look into the history of dogs. I feel like dogs were only owned by like very rich people for a while. Yeah. Um, but there were probably wild dogs running around. But uh, pugs are interesting because if a pug was around in 1740, yeah. they have been breeding that thing into disaster since. Because its face is smushed. It can't breathe. Yeah. Um, so they chose it because it represents a symbol of loyalty, trustworthiness, and steadiness. So that's the thing. is like, think about this for a second. Think about all the animals they had options with. You know, They could have picked a dragon. A fox, a dragon. A wolf, a wolf, a wolf, a bear. Order, think about a this. lion. Order of the bear. Order of the wolf. Yeah. Order of the dragon. All better. Order of the pug. Order of the pug of that small two, like one foot smashed. The thing. ugliest animal ever created. It's it's ugly, cute, and even people who own them are like, it's so ugly, it's adorable. Yeah, that's part of the joke. Is that they're disgusting looking, and that's why we love them. Yes. My because, cousin like, has a pug. It's just like, and they're, um, they're, they're friendly fat, dogs. They're and fat. And their face is squished in. They're, f- they're fat and they're squishy. They look like a normal dog that fell out of a window and face planted on a sidewalk. <laughs> that is what a pug looks like. It's, it's a just cartoon like, animal. It's basically like its face is made of Play-Doh. Yeah. It's a small squishy bean. And a dumb two-year-old had like played around with it yeah. too long. And then here's what the result was. Yeah. And it's, it's so basically like... I've never once... And that's the animal they got behind. If someone's asked me what my spirit animal was or like what I think of as strong and independent, I'm not going to be like, a pug. Also, pug and loyalty. Never really heard those two connected. I'm sure pugs are probably loyal. Yeah, but so it's like every dog. I don't think pugs move around enough for them to leave you. Maybe Maybe that's that's why why they think it's loyal. Because it's lazy. This pug has never left my side. Yeah, because it can't breathe. People could say I'm loyal at parties because I just stay, sit on the couch the whole time. Yeah. Like, I don't ever get up there like, man, this guy's really loyal to this party. Oh, yeah. He hangs out. Yeah. Um, so, members called themselves the Mops. The Mops. Because it was German for pugs. Okay. So, the the pugs were part of the order of the pug. Yeah. So, yeah. if you, you were the Mops. The Mops of the order yeah. of the pug. Yeah. So, it'd be like, are you a mop? I'm a mop. A yeah. mop all mop, day. Mop sounds offensive. Like, I know it's not. It's, it's one letter away from an offensive word. 
But um, what? That's for that's an offensive word towards Italians. Is if you call them. Yeah, I've never it, heard that before. Yeah, it's a, you know, it's there's an entire song that goes. Yeah, yeah, but they don't mean it like in that way. No, it was, it's an offensive term towards. Because that would change the entire context. Of that but song. a mop is a weird word. It but is it's a weird German. Word. It's German. Okay. I mean, I guess it's, so it's, it's German, it's German for, pug. for pugs, but they call themselves the mops. So they call mops. themselves the pugs. Welcome to the vo- the the mops. Yeah, but they were probably were they German? Uh, don't know. Don't <laughs> no, I mean Bavaria. Where is sure. that in don't know. To Germany? Don't know. Sounds like chocolate. <laughs> Chocolate City. Bavaria. Bavaria was chocolate city. No, it sounds like Bavarian chocolates. Like I've I've probably had those. But I was just saying, it's like I don't know where Bavaria is. No, Bavaria, I don't. But like, <laughs> um, I guess they had German people in, and they were. If Roman. I paid you Roman? ten thousand dollars, would you be able to find Bavaria in like two tries? <laughs> <Not a, laughs> no. Like I know this, not a chance. No. Um, yeah. and and they're Roman Catholic, Bavarian. Hell, Germans. I struggle with a lot of countries on a blank map. If yes. you put a blank map, we should do that on the show. My, my, we should. Actually, we're yeah. going to do that. Now, um, it's visual, so it might be tough, but we'll make it work. Yeah. We'll oh, figure dude, it out. it's fine. We'll, we'll, we'll figure it out. Um, yeah. We'll just list out. It'll just be one with the country. What we should do is we should take the camera and hold it overhead and have the map here and be like point to and say the country and like try to see like right in. We'll each have a blank map and then we'll like have to like write in as many countries as we feel like we can get. Uh, under like a certain time frame like two minutes or something like yeah. that into a blank map and then we need somebody to check it we'll figure it out my geographical knowledge peaked when i was like 12 because our shower curtain yeah at my old yeah, house we've had, had that, that the new world house. map Ooh, i can start studying <laughs> it, had, it had like a world map and like i was like i yeah. knew what ulaanbaatar was and that was a capital city in mongolia yeah that's that nugget still up there because like every morning I would stand there and just stare at because the, there's not like nothing else to do. It's official. Next episode, the fiftieth episode. Whenever we get to do that in a couple weeks, we will do a map competition. We will like maybe we'll yeah. both have like uh, we'll like, get Ashley, maybe even Abby here. We'll we'll get some. We'll get we'll get the whole. We'll crew. have someone read we'll off like uh, where is this city? Yeah. In what country? And then we have yeah. to name the country. Yeah, we'll we'll, go, we'll do a I like geography. That. I like that better. A we'll, geography quiz. We'll do the geography we name quiz. the country. Yeah, yeah, yeah okay. we'll figure that out. All right, so that will be oh. episode fifty. But Book back to it. back okay. to the pugs. Anyway, the mops. back to the pugs. Um, now this is where it starts getting a little weird. Um, new members, right? So you, you want to join the the mops. You want to be a mop. Yeah. Um, so you want you want to join the order of the pug. They were initiated wearing a dog collar. Oh, right. Little, so little they're kinky like, there. yeah. So they wear the collar, right? That's what I was thinking. Yeah. Um, I was like, okay, well, so I this want is, to be a mob. You know what this is? <laughs> if people branded it the special Masonic Order, it was just, it was just it was a, a sex group. club. It, it was, was like, the, it was like furries. Yeah. Yeah, furries it was like yeah. anyone. Sex club. Oh, let, let's let's me be a mob. Uh, yeah, put this and dog like color. Or, have me. you seen the ponies? The human people yeah, that act like horses. No. Same group, probably. Yeah, no. I, I mean, I haven't horse. seen them personally. I'm not like part of the group. Or anything, um, but so basically, so they put on the dog collar, and then they had to get on all fours and scratch at a door to get in. Okay. Like a dog. So this is like that. That's exactly the, what you described, but back then. This was like a kinky, thinking. weird fetish group. I think it's a fetish group that like, was mislabeled. Oh, we're a religious society? Yeah. Like, that's what we are. Because they were then blindfolded, oh. led around a carpet on a leash yeah. with special symbols on the carpet. Sure. Nine times. Is this the induction ceremony? This is the induction ceremony. Got it. Got Nine it. times while the pugs of the order... Barked? Barked at them yes, in order did. to test their metal. So you're yeah. blindfolded, wearing a collar, walking around on this strangely symboled carpet that you can't see yeah. while people just go, woof, woof, woof. Sometimes I think our society now was weird, but then you read about some stuff that people... Weird. The, the thing is, is like... Because well, they didn't have any outlets for it, right? If somebody did this, this thing you're describing like now, there would be, it would be like... 500 reddit threads about it like positively it would be like it'd be like this is i've done i tried it and it's great i love being a mob recognize this yeah. subgroup yeah exactly you know exactly. we have a voice <laughs> we are pugs mop two <laughs> mop two <laughs> mop lives matter too oh yeah. god basically like <laughs> it's just a weird kink group because it's just there's and during the this is during the initiation they so they had this porcelain pug this yeah. like handcrafted porcelain pug yeah. They had to crawl up to it, kiss the pug's ass directly under the tail uh, as an expression of total devotion. You know what's under the tail? Yeah. Is the, the butthole. Yep, yep. They had to, they had to, I don't know if it's a, is that the proper term? Rim job? Yeah, yeah. That's a a proper dog. Term. A fake dog. Yeah. 
They, yeah. At what point are you still like, they're Masonic society. They're doing religious secret at things. At what point in the ceremony would you have tapped out? Would it be the collar around the neck? Would it be the nine times in the circle? Would it be when I'm the barking stuff starts? It would starts? probably be about the third time around the carpet because this sure. is back then and carpets back then were like really f- big yeah i'm talking like a carpet would be like 20 feet and also back then like they didn't have the internet to research this ahead of time so if your buddy jim brings you along to the meeting and like he doesn't really give you much detail you just go along because you're like oh jim's a cool guy he's obviously gonna bring me a cool cool thing yeah yeah and then you show up and he's jim's like being gonna be like i'm really glad you're gonna be part of the society brother and he uh puts the collar around your neck and puts a blindfold on. at that point the questions would kind of be raised and be like scratch at this door be like okay after about the third lap i would be like Like, i'm people barking first of all i'm exhausted (laughs) yeah i'd be like first of all this is hard yeah um also you're barking at me i don't like this anymore i don't i'm wiping my hands of this situation do I have to like kick my feet and like I don't know? That's leave the thing. The How room? do you get out? I mean, I would just stand up and like walk away and be like, "You guys are being ridiculous." But you, there's a doggy door. I wonder if they like. But if you like try to not join in the middle of it, I wonder if they just kill you. Because back then you could just kill people and like you could get away with it for the rest of your life. It's it's a weird sex thing. It's a weird it sex has thing, to be. and we're calling it something different. And it it is a sex thing, and there's no other way you can describe it. Um, basically, all the members who actually made it through initiation who kissed the the pug's butt made out a little bit with yeah. the, the butt. Sure. Um, they carried a pug medallion made of pure silver. Ooh. I'd like a pug medallion. Yeah, you get a medal for mm. kissing ass. Um, as, you, as you should. And then in 1745, the order of secrets were exposed in a book. And those books are hard to make. So somebody was like, I went oh, through yeah. this. And someone was like, this needs to just, this needs to be a thing people know about. Um, and shortly after, the order was formally banned in 1748, but there have been reports as recent as 1902 that indicated the order may still be active. Oh, my God. Could you imagine? The mops, man. They're, they're going to make a comeback. If you were at work and someone's like, hey, you want to join the order of the pug? I'd be like, F- you. Yeah. F- everything you do. You I'm like out. pugs? You like pugs? Anyway. Uh, thank you for enjoying Salty Dalton's incredible brain explosion, full body learning experience. Make sure you tune in next week or the week after or the week after that. Yeah. Because there could be more. Who knows? Anyway, um, just to reiterate, this, yeah. this was brought to you by Captain Crunch Open Waters coming this fall to theater near you. It was. It was. And we do have another sponsor to thank here as... Uh, you listened to that uh, other movie earlier. We've got another one for you. It's a little change of pace, and uh, it's going to be another big hit this fall. Expect it in the Oscar season. Let's go ahead and roll the tape. Coming this fall, another Oscar nominee. A story of a detective out of his country. Dead children, newspapers, are all over the story. And nobody has any answers. Uh, this is the fifth child this week. What's going on out there? Oi, Tommy, you want to play the hero, Tommy? You want to chase the killer? Well, that's well and fine. But Tommy, let me ask you this. What if the killer chases you? What are you talking about, Clarence? Come here, kids. Come on, right out of the forest. I got something for you. Do you see that? Green with some sort of hat? What the hell are you? Well, children, there's no pot of gold, but there is this knife. You put that down, you son of a bitch! <laughs> oi, oi, there's bones hanging from the ceiling. It seems you found my lucky charms. Time to add to the collection. My god. Okay. Lucky charms. Out of luck. Coming this fall. <laughs> man what a classic that's gonna be huh what a classic real gut buster it's a gut buster it's cool because like this is the origin story for these childhood serial icons yeah. right it's a gritty reboot and i'm really liking that the take the director is going um tilly can you please <laughs> tilly Every time. stop <laughs> she never bothers you tilly guess what <laughs> i'm gonna give you a piece of pepperoni oh no if you go and never come back I'm, I'm not because I already ate my pepperoni. Um, these are great movies, though, that are coming out, guys. It's 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 something you. And that co- one was, uh, I believe, it was Lucky Charms. Yeah, Lucky Charms. Out of luck. Out of luck. 
Um, so we do want to remind you, so we are going to skip a couple segments that you hear sometimes on the show, the new format. We're going to mix some stuff around. We want to keep it short for you. But we will get into a classic do here. It! And that is do's and don'ts. Just do it! I don't think so. Just do it! I got a couple of listener submissions as well, like everything is, uh, here for do's and don'ts. Oops, a little too low. Um, so this is from Anonymous Anonymous. Anonymous Anonymous? Is this the rando? Number one rando at gmail.com. Oh, boy. No subject line. It says, any words of advice? Well, I'm doing this for do's and don'ts instead of call center because we can give do's and don'ts to this. That's why. Um, and I'll read the other letter when we get to call center. So, any words of advice for buying a car? The sales agents at dealerships can be so manipulative, it's hard to tell if you're being taken advantage of. And it's signed T. Payne. They signed it. Um, do you think? Uh, I do don't you think. think. No. What if, though? No. If I mean, T. Payne was the if? number one rando? It's possible. He was the masked singer, so you never know. It's going to happen. He the masked singer, what? season one. Okay. You How watch is that show? The- what is that show season even about? Two, season two started. I'm going to probably watch an episode I heard ninjas tonight. ninjas on it. Yeah, it's, it's going to be great. It's going to be great. Um, so do's, let's do do's and don'ts for buying a car. The dealership. So some do's and some don'ts to help out the people. First thing first, let's go with do's, Salty Dalton. Do you have one at the ready? I do. Um, dress in raggedy clothing. Um Whatever you, if you, if you're you come back from work, maybe you're going right to the dealership. Throw some dirt on your clothes. Um, you know, look a little worse for wear um, because you don't want to go in there because the second you walk in there, they're sharks, right? Oh yeah. They're sizing you up. They're determining your net worth by looking at you. Okay, they can run the credit check sure later, but it's all about that initial interaction. So if you look like you have been saving up for a little while, you know you you. It's, you're, you're knocking pennies together. I don't exactly. know what the phrase is. You gotta like have pennies in your and, hand and knock them kind together. Kind of clinking them together in your hands. And uh, go to the go to the more expensive cars, right? First, yeah. you don't even want to buy them. No. Look at them and then like flinch at the price. Yeah. And keep walking down, and then 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 um, keep going back to the car that you like, but flinch at the price. Go back, walk back to the car, flinch at the price. They're gonna think that you're you're a little bit more destitute. And you want this car so bad, you'll pay for it. Yeah. And you're gonna get a better deal. Like you're not gonna, you're gonna walk out there a couple grand less off that price, but it's gonna be worth it it's because all about that you. Deal. Yeah. You got you got to sell the fact that you are not rich. Yeah. And they need to meet you halfway. I like it. My do would be. So here's the thing. Cars. It's all about the lingo. It's all about the lingo. Oh, how many horsepower on that carburetor? Oh, what do you? What kind of engine oil do you get in that engine? You know those sorts of things. So here's what you're gonna do is. You're going to bring in lingo that the car dealers have never heard in their life because it's not real. But if you say it with enough confidence, you will then be emasculating the person that you're talking to. Because here's the thing. I'm not really a car guy, if you can't tell. I don't really know the lingo. So when I go in there and somebody starts speaking this gibberish, (laughs) it makes me feel like less of a man. But now if I go in and I start saying like, oh, what kind of... uh, what kind of wheels are those? Are those uh, Duralin uh, Duralin 65s? They're gonna be like, uh, I don't, I don't know. And you go, oh, okay, I guess you guys don't know about that, and just be like, you don't know about the 357 Hemi block. Yeah. What about the hood there? Is that a uh, what th- that hood there you got there? Is that a a 55 Crayola? And uh, and you know, <laughs> kind of throw some of these terms their way. They're not gonna know what they are. You're gonna be have the upper hand, and thus you will win the the negotiation. Excuse me, Tilly. Can you please stop scratching my knee? Okay. Um, Do you mind? Go over so there. my don't would be um, don't go in there to buy a car. Go in there to sell your car, your car. to them. Yeah. So um, Not even a dealership that takes used cars. <laughs> you walk in there, they swarm you, and you're talking about this. And the more they start talking about that car, start up-talking yours. Start learning about them. See if they're in the market for a car. Basically, you want them to understand that you are a better salesman than they are oh yeah and the only way doesn't even have to just be a car you could sell them anything you could sell them anything and be like hey listen i'll buy this car if you buy this from me and they're gonna want it so bad yeah. because you're such a good salesman and you're going in there and you don't even get you don't even give a shit about these cars you're going in there to sell and they respect that and you'll probably get a better deal you will um 
My don't. My don't. Don't ever say yes to anything. <laughs> so they're going to go in. They're going to offer you I some ideal, that. some deals, some discounts. Don't ever say yes to any of them. Say, um, you should do so some more like, hmm. Yeah. Interesting. That's that's yeah. uh that's higher than I was offered yesterday. You you always got to throw in that always second offer. Always compare it to too. somebody yeah. else. Yeah, yeah that's pull not out, what the guy said down the street there. Pull out yeah. like a bunch of really obscure dealerships and be like, hmm, interesting. I mean, a lot of these guys are going lower, and I really had high hopes for you guys. Yeah. Yeah, you can throw that in. Don't non-committal. And yeah, compare very non-committal. everything. Exactly. I love it, dude. Exactly. Crushing it. All right, so that's the do's and don'ts for that. Let's give. Uh, let's go to another one here. Do's and don'ts for changing in a public place. I like that a lot because I think you and I have probably both in this been in the situation. Well, um, I just recently did this, and yeah, <clears throat> this is so bad. So I went shooting with um, uh, Jake and Gabe and a few others, um, and uh, I got to the range right, and I'm like, ah oh, man, I. I haven't been to this range. Some of them have rules, like you have to wear pants or a hat or some other stuff. Yeah. And I was wearing shorts, and I was like, all right, well, I packed jeans just in case. But I was wearing my bird dog shorts, which had built-in underwear. Phenomenal, oh, no. by the way. They're the best shorts I've yeah, ever yeah, owned. Yeah. Um, so I'm just like, okay, so I open my door, and I'm in this parking lot. No one else is in the parking lot. Like, Well, I mean, like it's packed full of cars, but no one's walking in or out. So I drop trowel, and I'm butt naked for <laughs> like... <laughs> for like maximum of 10 seconds max <laughs> i pull on the jeans and my underwear and then the person in the car <laughs> next to me pulls out of their spot <laughs> i looked oh my god first do keep your head on a f-ing swivel oh because i literally looked no one was in that car it must have happened while i was looking down yeah. this person probably stared at my bare white pale butt <laughs> yep and was like, okay. Because, like, they just drive away and they don't even make eye contact with me. And I was like, wow. I just got naked in front of another human being that is, n- like, that I don't know. So you could say a do could be check your surroundings. Yeah, keep your head on a swivel. Head on 24/7. a swivel. 24-7. Yeah. My do. Um, man, that's such a good story. Because um, I've been in this situation a couple times. Like, I remember at my old job, I'd have to change to get ready for our baseball practice coaching. Mm -hmm. I'd have to change in the office, um, which, uh, you know, was always a a tough task. So my do, my do for changing in a public place. Um, I'm actually trying to think of this one. Um, So kind of playing off what you said is you got to have a system developed for how you're going to be changing your clothes. So here's the thing. By system, I mean... Well, actually, here's a question for you. How do you get dressed? Let's say you're butt naked. What do you do first? What do I do first? Um, First thing I do is... Like, what order of is your clothes that you put on? It goes underwear. Yep. Socks. Oh, see, I save socks for later. You say socks? No, because socks are... I do are, socks last. Because I don't have the, the clothes and the pants getting in the way when I put on the sock so I go underwear I go socks then I go undershirt if applicable mm-hmm. um, but that's only if because the if there's no undershirt then I go right to pants oh interesting and the shirt is the last thing I put on I always go shirt before pants regardless of the situation oh, so you do a little risky business action there <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah absolutely like a four year old with a diaper and a, a shirt on and a lot of the time I'm wearing a white undershirt like I am now and I tuck the white undershirt into the pants and then I wear like the polo over it wait because wait 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 wait. <laughs> it's not weird and your you're gonna underwear? make this seem weird no 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 <laughs> okay because we describe that as no in the I'm pants. in my underwear then I tuck my shirt into no, my no. underwear so like for this polo um, or really for any time wearing an undershirt I tuck the white shirt into the jeans and then I pull on, even though this polo isn't tucked in, I've tucked the shirt in under because you don't want to have those two things swishing together. You look like a a, a, a little a little uh, I was gonna say little ghetto boy, <laughs> like it's some like uh, folk tale. Um, the little ghetto boy. No, you're gonna look. Uh, yeah, I've you're gonna been. look. You're gonna look bad if you do like if if the undershirt is longer than the other shirt or something well, like that. Well, if like, it's longer, obviously, terrible. but like generally, I. I don't wear polos untucked that often. Yeah, I only do it at my office because I wear jeans. I don't like to tuck them into jeans. I feel like you look like a 70-year-old <laughs> man if you tuck them into jeans. It's not right. 
Now, I do tuck in my dress shirts, for sure. I never untuck those. Well, you can't untuck a dress shirt because they're like <laughs> they're so long. four times as long as your Unless body. Unless you buy Untuck It. Untuck It. Yeah. Um, also a sponsor of this show. Give me a don't. I didn't really give a do, but I didn't have one. So give me a don't for changing in a public place. Don't wear clothing that is hard to get out of. The biggest yeah. factor that you are going to encounter in your everyday life is... It's, it's not necessarily like... Um, it's not uh it's not what are you gonna change into, how you're gonna change into it. It's it's basically minimizing the amount of time your naked body is out in the middle of a parking lot for someone to see. Yeah. Right? So it's just it's the time between clothing is the real metric that you need to measure, right? Yeah. Cause like, you know, uh, when you take off a shirt and you put on the shirt, how long is your bare chest out there? That's that's what I'm concerned about. So you need to wear clothing that is conducive to quick changes i'm talking like stripper pants right so yeah if i have to switch garments i want everything to be able to rip off with velcro very quickly and efficient right like yeah. if there's a stain on my shirt boom that shirt's gone yeah and then the next one i don't even have to put it on over my head i just click it in you know <sighs> man click it or ticket click it or say. ticket you know uh i made a um we had a in a driver's ed class in like was it sophomore year of high school we had that poster competition where you had to make the new slogan, and the the one that actually like did really well, they'd submit it to a contest. Yeah. And so we all like submitted ours, and mine <laughs> was buckle up or knuckle up, and it had this fucking bloody fist on it. <laughs> wow. I spent all night making it, and yeah. it didn't get picked as the slogan. I'm shocked. I know. I'm astounded. I thought it was funny. I That's thought it was funny. cool. Like buckle up or, or knuckle, knuckle up. Yeah. Like. Like somebody's gonna beat you up for not buckling, yeah. or you're gonna die. Yeah, you buckle up, or you get beat up by someone yeah. in the car. Um, my don't, my don't for changing in a public place. I just say, you know, um, don't forget. Uh, or actually, here's one. Is, so most of the time when I've changed in a public place has been in a bathroom, right? In a bathroom stall. Um, so I'd say, be oh, sure. Hold on. Yeah. In our you said something and mm, hold on, I'm just gonna chew this out over here. Okay, sure. Vamp, keep vamping. Okay, oh, well, I was gonna tell my don'ts, um, but now you seem to stop me. My don't was gonna be, um, make sure you flush the toilet before you change into your new clothes. First of all, I will. The bathroom is the last place that I want to change. Sure. Because one stench. Stench. Two, the floor is no, always wet. It's always wet, yeah. and you don't know what it's wet with. Yeah. So like the second you're the second when you're taking off your pants and they're gonna hit the ground. There they go. There they go. They're about they're to get done. Wet. They're dead uh. to me. I don't ever want to wear those pants again. No. So how do you how do you do that? Do you do like one leg at a time? Do you actually let your clothes hit the ground? What I do is I stand on my shoes. I've done that before, where I'll stand with my socks on like on top of my shoes. My shoes are off. I'm standing on them, almost like raising my feet up a bit. And that, and then I'm making sure the pants aren't touching the floor. So you're doing one leg at a time while balancing on your shoes. That's difficult. Yeah, I'm like a, I'm like a circus soleil. Circus, circus soleil. Yeah. Um, at the airport, they have hooks like all up in the stalls. Like not even the stalls. The urinals have hooks all over the place. So you, well, at least in the Minneapolis airport, they did, where you literally can hang up your suit jacket, your your backpack, whatever you need to hang up right there while you're just at the urinal. With the dividers. Are hooks high or low? I, I didn't actually see them. I was because just told about Because if it's anywhere chest and down, no way am I hanging a coat there. <laughs> yeah, Are you true. kidding me? The residual splashback? There was some splashback. You're right. Anyway. I, I, I realized my fly was down um, at one point on the trip. Dude. Because I have this pair of jeans. The fly goes down. It could be down right now. I'm going to check. I walked from my train this morning to my building with no, my fly really down. 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 I yeah. went to the bathroom before I left the car. The left to go to my car. Ugh. The... And your dress clothes, so your shirt's tucked in, flies are right out there for the scene. Yeah, dude. It, man. I spent an hour of my commute with my fly completely That's down. Terrible. That's terrible. Yeah. Man. That's embarrassing. Um, it is. I feel sorry for you. It's only yeah. dark colored pants I forget, too. Oh, when did I have you, khakis, I always zip it up. Hold on. Are you going to get that? Yeah, I'll get it. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. Hello, Random Word Podcast. Good acting there, buddy. Thanks, man. Well, I mean, I, I watched uh, Captain Crunch open waters and Lucky Charms out of luck, and I got inspired by the acting. Those are some great movies, and we hope you come along with us. I got a couple quick emails before we read the longer ones here. So Ricky did email in, um, and it's based around... So he emailed at 6.52 this morning about episode That's 55, Cacophony. 
um, the pilot house. He said, just spitballing here, but if Solo Island ever takes off, we try Me, Myself, and Island was his suggestion there for a name of that's, that show. That's a really... Did he trademark it? Um, he didn't trademark it. That's but, ours now. All right, it's ours. Thanks, Ricky. We appreciate it. We're going to steal that. Thanks, idiot. We also had another email that just said... Well, uh, the subject line one year anniversary show just finished listening love the format and the interspersion of old clips and listener email slash voice memos great job just a simple great job did you email that into no us? i did not and i thought you would probably think that <laughs> i did not email that in but the people have spoken we did a great job cool on that episode no matter how much you hated the format everybody else loved it okay well it wasn't that i hated the format i didn't know what the format was <laughs> look you, you were despised like despised every sat, second of it i sat down and you were like welcome to the danger zone bitch and you start playing clips. And you immediately were like, what the hell's going on here? This is terrible. I hate every second of this. Um, That's going to be an episode that tears us apart. I know. I like, know. Like I, will never, now? I will never forget the day that Salty Dalton tried to sabotage the anniversary show episode that I spent so long working on. Uh, All right, call center. Let's start with Gordon. Gordon, 25. Maybe it's Gordon Ramsey. G Ram, 25 years old. Disc jockey journeyman. Coworker always listens to music at his desk without headphones. It's not blaring, but it's loud enough that I can clearly understand what song is playing. I've tried dropping hints about this, and he always asks if I want to request any songs. How do I get him to stop being the office DJ and just use headphones like any normal person? Okay, so this person is automatically the person who uses speakerphone yeah. to talk. Oh, for sure. In, in the middle of a room. car dealership. Happens to me every time. I'm going to get my car fixed on Saturday. I sw- it's not. It doesn't need fixed, but it's routine thing. What I swear to God, gain? somebody's going to be talking. It's, it, the funny thing is, is like speakerphone is for hands free. Yeah. And one hand is holding the speakerphone, yeah. and they're just yelling it's into pointless. it. It's pointless. It's you gonna sound happen. like you're on speaker. I'm on speaker. Yeah. It's yeah. It's gonna happen. Um. So I like how his reaction is to immediately be like, "What? Did you? Did you want it? Do you want to hear something? I got." Kesha's yeah, I can't up. tell if he's being like sarcastically like, asking that. Do you want to listen to Kesha? Yeah. Kesha's Kesha. Wait. I mean, yeah. Kesha is great. No wait. No, 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 no. I know Ke- Kesha's up next. So that's that's basically why is that your reaction? That's the thing is I'm wondering if it's sarcasm. I wonder if he's sarcastic and be like, oh yeah, do you want to request also, a like, song? You. How hard is it to like? I'm. Headphones, man. You got the AirPods. You and I are part of if AirPod anything, Nation. If anything, headphones help you at work because people don't bother you if they yeah. think you're listening to something that's a key i i will sometimes put the airpods in i'm not listening in yeah. sh- it's just there um so uh i thought we help gordon out something you could probably do is get a bunch of um bluetooth speakers yeah. um give basically get about one bluetooth speaker for every person sure who's uh in the office right and you're going to um physically attach them to his desk under his desk in a drawer uh, you're gonna bolt them there right yeah and then when he starts going right you're gonna maybe put on um brazilian death metal okay and it's gonna play at his favorites. it's gonna play at his desk yeah. and he's gonna be like what is it what's going on and he's gonna be like, hey is anyone playing this and then someone else is gonna play something like uh um bavarian death screaming yeah yeah or um the sound that maybe like it's a, a YouTube clip of somebody um, scratching dead skin off someone's back. Yeah, a cat doing it, or or a cat. Yeah, or maybe it's a some some of the most annoying sounds. Sure. Like maybe some ten sure. continuous hours of someone chewing. A kettlebell army. Yeah. Yeah. What what? Or kettle not kettlebells. The one that actually make the noise. Not kettlebell. The, not the exercise. Yeah, kettlebells. The kettlebell <laughs> army. Just kettlebell army jack, sounds dude. pretty scary. It does. Um, <laughs> so you're gonna do that, and then um, every time. That he tries to ask you to stop. Yeah. You look him dead in the eyes and say, "Do you want a specific song to be played?" That's true. And um, so it, it's going to be tough, right? Because you're going to have to listen to that crap that you don't like, right? Yeah, like but it's this. some revenge music, right but there. But you're you're basically playing a longer game. You can wait him out, right? Yeah, for sure. And once you give him a taste of his own medicine, tenfold, he's never going to do it again. Yeah. Mine was just going to be, you got to find, uh, you, now you have to have access to his phone to do this, but you got to find access to his phone and secretly connect his phone Bluetooth to a, a different speaker that's on the other side of the office. Ooh. In the boss's office. So when he that's plays, actually amazing. when he plays oh his God. song, it plays in the boss's office. And the boss comes walking out and be like, who's playing this right now? And the guy's going to be like, uh, uh, uh. Yeah. And they'd be like, oh, all right, come see me in my office. Exactly. 
Well, come come to the DJ booth there, Jim. Yeah, that's that's how you get him back, Gordon. And he gets fired. He loses his job. He gets becomes homeless. He starts doing crack cocaine, 100%. selling himself yeah. on the street, I'm, and eventually kills himself. You know what I say? And I, I live by this. I've said it a million times. Yeah. Play stupid games, win stupid prizes. <laughs> I've heard you say it that's every your, day. That's your prize, Jim. All right, who's next? Um, let's do let's Chris. Let's do uh, Chris is 30 years old. Um, Ooh, this it is a good says one. pick up peril. Uh, try and get back into pickup basketball. Same. But it takes me forever to get on the court. Remember when I wouldn't let you into the club? Yeah. Because I don't have the power to do that. Yes, if they saw me, say, Ben Simpson added, uh, you know, Dirty Dalton, or not Salty Dalton, uh, they'd be like, what the hell? You don't have that power. You never even come. Like, what are you talking about? You are not on the council of elders. I'm not on the council of elders. You are not granted the rank of master. I had to be brought in. I mean, that's fine, but you could definitely do it. I could not do it. Um, he's trying to get back into pickup basketball, but he sure. can't He can't get onto the court. He can't get um, any playing yeah, time. He sure. says, I'm new to the courts. Well, granted, so, you know, when people yeah. have been playing there a while, they got the regulars. For sure, for sure. Um, but he can never get a chance. Any thoughts on how he can get some minutes in? Yes. Oh, I have a thought right off the bat, Chris. Show up in judges' robes. Say, I'm trying to get on this court. That, oh, my God, that's amazing. And there is absolutely <laughs> no way that they don't <laughs> that they don't let you on the court. <laughs> there is no way that you don't get to play at that point. Guy shows up in judge's robes court to, is in to pick up basketball. You have to wear a you have to have a cartoon sized gavel. And you just and if, if they don't let you play at that point, then they don't deserve you, Chris. Okay, yeah, that's amazing. Um, <laughs> that's, that's I, my I, I don't think we could ever top that one, but um, <laughs> I would say go on Craigslist and get yourself a hype squad. Ooh, true, um, true. And you all wear matching warm ups or something, or maybe you're the only one wearing warm ups, and then they're just feeding you the ball, yeah. and you're in the background, and you're just like you're shooting, you're doing layups, you're like the they're zone. coming up and they're mobbing you and high fiving you after every yeah. shot, and they're gonna be like. Um, They'd be like, "Come on, man! Like, we gotta go. Uh, we gotta go shoot with like K Love later or something." Yeah, yeah. And like, drop names like that, and it's this hype exactly. squad doing this, right? Yeah. And one guy's like got a camera, and it's like a, they gotta look legit. They gotta look legit. That's the key. And so they're gonna they're gonna think you're some superstar. And the only other way you could possibly make that better is you just have to hire probably about like 15 people, and probably about eight of them have camera equipment, boom mics and stuff. Yep. And then you have one person play a host, right? It's totally and worth they it. And they come running on, they'd be like, welcome to Pepsi Street Ball. Yeah. We have an NBA player looking to take on a group of average Joes. And like they sell this whole like competition. Everyone's going to want to like be on your team. They're going to be like, an NBA guy? Oh, yeah. And it's totally worth it at that point to be able to go play pickup basketball. All you have to say is I played in the Italian leagues for a little while. True. everybody, Because nobody actually watches the Italian leagues, so how would anybody know? Yeah, I'm sorry. My other uh, possibility was going to be... Are you aware of the WAPS league? Yeah. Whoa. Whoa. We're, we're getting what? off the I've air. never heard that before. It's, That's it's, not real. It's an offensive What term. is this supposed to stand for? I don't know, but I, it's offensive. You can MOP is it. one letter away from... Yeah, please stop saying that. You're going to get us kicked off. The Italians are big in this audience. Um, I thought it was the Swedes. Don't the Swedes hate the Italians? The Swedes, I don't know. I don't know. But I was going to say the other thing is bring your own hoop to the pickup court. <laughs> so that way, if they don't just let like, you play. While they're playing, you just will into the middle and you're like, all right, guys, let's run it back. <laughs> that would be my suggestion. <laughs> Chris, <laughs> just just <laughs> <rubs. laughs> I'm trying to get on this court. Oh, man. Oh, man. 49. Oh, you got to go to episode 49, and then you got to go listen to 48, and then take a left at 46. Um, here's the thing, people. We have one more episode uh, left in the season. That'll be that not next week, correct. but it'll be probably the week after, and we will do the geography Wait, quiz and the why such. is it the week after? Um, well, actually, you'll be on vacation probably the week after. What? I don't know. I meant, like, why aren't we doing it next week? Because it's my birthday, and we're going to go... Man, we're professionals. I know, but we're going to go uh, it's enjoy It's the first I'm dinner. literally hearing of. We're going to go enjoy a wonderful dinner on a Thursday, uh, do probably some drinking, um, and uh, so we will we will be off. We're going to bring all the equipment, and we're going to yeah. live cast from dinner. So we probably won't be actually doing a show for like a while. No, I think... Maybe we should I'll record be here the something. Week we'll be here the week after that. I don't leave until like yeah, the... Yeah, but I leave. 
When do you leave? The fifth. All right, we probably should. Th- let's let's do this offline. Yeah, we'll figure this out. <laughs> this is a probably uh, terrible radio. <laughs> All right. Oh, no, what? People, people like this stuff. People, people <laughs> like the inside stuff. Um, do they? They've told me. They've told me. They emailed it just to me, though. <laughs> you, I can't show you. Um, so that's episode 49. Again, you can get in touch with us at randomwordblog at gmail.com and on Instagram at the random word podcast. Um, let's do our final thing that we do here on the show is we'll count down, we'll do three, two, one, and then we'll think of a random word. God, I hope it's not going to be the word that you've been uh, offensively saying. Um, we're going to go... <laughs> I'm sorry if I've offended him. I honestly... No, it's I not. I think that's made up. I, I mean, it's not made up, but it's like it was offensive like 70 years ago. What? Okay. I'll, before we sign off, I will, I will... You have to break this down for me because... Tell you, are you having a good time over here? It's funny because it also said song a bleep, and it, it's informal and offensive it's an italian or other southern european and it's uh, a slur for italians or people of italian ascent a bleep. so yeah so that's let's insane. Uh, it's a slur it's a slur that's so, a slur yeah you've offended many people today and just so, for the record shows it was sold through dalton not me um so for all you italian listeners out there um it wasn't me <laughs> yeah uh all right are you ready are you it ready for this because uh, again yeah. the whole rule is if we say the same word at the same time it's over. we're done we're not going to go to 50 and geography quiz and all that crap we'd be we're, we're just going to be we're done. done we're done we're done okay all right um all right let me ready? think about this for a second a little, little, little. all right three three two, two one gavel shirt oh. okay oh i almost oh. went judge oh, gavel 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 I gavel, made, gavel, gavel, I, gavel. I made it out of clay. Um, that is episode 49. That is Salty Dalton. I am Ben. Sayonara, sweet suckers. Sayonara, you, you bunch of <laughs> mops. The people that believe in pugs. The pug people. Sayonara. What do you got? You got to say something. You can't just... You have to say... Oh, oh I, I thought I was waiting for you to finish. Oh, I, I was finished. Going. I oh. was finished. I, I, I kept going because you didn't say anything. Oh, okay, sorry. We out of here, man. <laughs>